This is the Layla pouch and this is what we're going to be sewing today. This is a zippy pouch. It has got uh, obviously the zip along the top. It's really quick, really scrap friendly. You can use all your scraps on these stripes and it's a kind of quilt as you go project. It has got bound seams on the inside. Now, don't run away when I say bound seams. I'm going to show you my top tip for doing that. So inside the pouch, it's really school friendly. You've got a little pocket in there if you want to put your eraser and your sharpener as well. Inside we have got these bound seams. Like I say, I don't want you to be put off by that. I'm going to show you how I do it. There's a few different ways for doing bound seams, but if you're not sure about it, um, hopefully this is going to give you the tools and tips to go on and tackle any project that you see that has got bound seams. There's no curved edges, so you don't have to worry about that. They're all straight. So I'm going to take you through it step by step. You want to print off the pattern and you want to cut out your pattern pieces. Now we've got our tabs, so you want to cut out two of those. None of the pieces are interfaced, which makes it really quick. It makes it quicker as well, because let's face it, interfacing takes a bit of time and it costs a bit more money as well. We've got a slip pocket. You want to cut out one of those. Then we've got our main shapes. You want to cut out two of the main shapes and two of the fusible fleece. You're going to need a zipper. You can, get, you can use a pre-bought zipper or you can use zipper tape and a pull. If you're using your zipper tape and a pull, you want to burn the ends really carefully. And then I've just put a couple of bar tacks over the edges that helps with this project particularly, just so that it doesn't fall off the end and you don't pull the zipper off. Also going to need your bias binding. This is a bias binding that I've made. You don't have to cut it on the bias. Bias binding by nature is cut on the bias, but for this project, you can cut it straight on the grain. You're also going to need to cut out your strips. Now you can cut these out of any scraps that you may have, or you can use some fat quarters. You can use as many different fabrics as you like. These are all quilting weight cotton, and I'm using three different fabric choices. You want to bear in mind if they've got a directional print, which way you cut them. And you want to bear that in mind for the next step when we're piecing it all together. The other thing that I wanted to mention as well is that on the pattern, it says, I think it says 22 to cut out of these. You may want to cut these as you go. You probably won't need as many as 22. And I'm going to show you how I did the angle on mine so that you'll probably end up with a lot less than 22. But I wanted to put that in there because one of my testers did manage to need 22. So it does depend on the angle that you sew it on. So I'll explain that in a little bit. You want to lay your strips that you've cut out in the order that you're going to put them on. This is going to really help you when you come to sewing them. So that's just something that I like to do. So I'm going to put them over like this. I find that having a ruler with an angle measurement on it, so I'm going to use 30 degrees, is really, really helpful. You don't have to have this, but it just does make it a little bit more easier. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is you want to fuse your fusible fleece to the back of one of the large shapes. Now when you cut out this pattern, you'll notice that there is a shape within the outer pattern. Okay, so you're going to first of all cut out the rectangular shape. Well, it's almost a square because you cut it on the fold. Be sure to cut it on the fold. And if you've got a directional print, then you're going to want the print to go at the top where it says zipper edge. Okay, so that is the top of your directional print if you've got one. So you've fused the um, cotton to the back of the fusible fleece. You do want to use cotton, not vinyl on this project. If you want to use vinyl, you totally can. I wouldn't recommend doing the quilt as you go technique. I think it's going to make it really bulky and a little bit unmanageable. Um, I, If you were going to do vinyl, then what you would want to do is you want to skip this whole quilt as you go technique um, and then just put the cotton on the back 
vinyl on the top or leatherette on the top and then when you come to the next bit of cutting out the inner shape you would just jump straight to that hopefully all that all makes sense now we're going to turn over our larger shape which is pattern piece three so that we've got the fleece the right side up okay then we're going to grab our ruler again you don't have to do it at this angle how did I do it before oh yeah I did it that way and then what you want to do is you want to place the ruler on hopefully you can see I know that that ring light is right in the way there um, it is one of the hazards of a ring light unfortunately so I've placed that on and my 30 degrees is this line here it's going like that okay again you do not have to do it at this angle it's just what I recommend I just want to double check that that's the right way up yep I've got the top of my print up here and I'm going to mark on along that 30 degree line okay like I say you don't have to do that line my ruler doesn't quite match or reach but I can figure it out okay and then I'm just marking on with a friction pen this bit isn't in the pattern but it does make it a bit easier if you want to have the two sides matching up because you need to do this panel twice right so when you lay it on you can see hopefully you can see that I'll put it on the dark a bit can you see there's nothing in that corner now I realized that okay so the pattern that I made is bigger as you can see there is a lot of wriggle room inside because effectively in a little bit we're going to cut out all of that white space okay so we're going to be left with this inner shape so this is all excess because of the in the nature of this technique um, it does often make it a bit smaller so we're, we've, we're quilting onto the bigger size then we're going to cut it down so don't worry too much about that little um, triangle if you are worried about it you could still draw that line and just shift it over so you're still following that line and start it right on the corner okay so you want to lay right side up and on top of the right side up of the fleece okay then you want to get your second strip for me it's this um what is it space fabric <laughs> can't get my words out and you want to lay that right sides down on top of the strip so the two raw edges of that long edge are matching or meeting just check if you've got a shorter piece like i do that when you flip it over can you see that it doesn't meet up there okay so that's not going to work so I'm going to move that to one side I might be able to use that on another bit but I've probably got enough not to also if you've got a directional print like I have be sure again triple check that you have got the top of the print there and the top of the print up here okay right sides together make sure that when you flip it over that is going to meet yeah that's going to be fine and this is following that line okay you can pop a pin in if you would like to I find that the fleece does keep it fairly kind of sticks to it a little bit so you don't need to put a pin in then we're going to move over to the machine and we're going to do a quarter inch seam all the way along that long edge now I've been using a universal needle in my machine and I'm just using regular Gutterman thread um, all-purpose Gutterman thread I've moved my needle over so that it's a quarter of an inch from the edge of my foot that makes it easy nice and easy to follow a straight line and I can line up the edge of the foot with the edge of the fabric now I've just noticed I've got a long stitch so I'm going to turn that down to two and a half Going to do a locking stitch because I was sewing with it before, and then I'll keep going. Take the pin out, and I'm just going to place my pressing mat underneath. Then, what we're going to do, let's move that out of the way, is we're going to push that piece over, and you can finger press it or you can iron it. 
I am going to finger press this one because I've got that bit of raw fleece. I don't want to catch it with the iron, but I am going to press it later. So give that a really good finger press or use an iron. Then we're going to take our next strip and we're going to repeat the process. So we're going to pop that raw side to raw side or raw edge. Double check that when you flip it over, it's going to cover up that fleece at the top. And we're going to sew along there. So we have done the next strip, fold it over, and then we want to go along and fill up that whole piece with strips. Okay, get our go back to our strips and we want to use that first one again because that's our next one again you might be using all different colours and patterns that's totally fine as well just if you want to have an order then it's a bit easier if you have them laid out going to grab the iron, get rid of these extra strips. And actually, first of all, I'm going to flip it over and cut off the excess strips. Grab the iron, flip it over, and then I'm just going to give that a really nice press. Right, now we've pressed that all really nicely, we want to get our pattern piece and we're going to cut it down so that we are cutting along that inner solid line. Paper scissors, so we're literally cutting out the pattern. Okay, so you've cut those out, you want to make sure again that you've got the top at the top and then you've got the zipper edge at the top. Then we want to fold it in half and we're going to find the middle. And I like to put a pin in the top and a pin in the bottom because then it's going to be really obvious on the other side. Right, so there we go, we've got our middle and we're going to line up our pattern piece because obviously it's a cut on the fold so we're going to line up the middle. Now I'm going to go right up to the top so that I've got the allowance for that bottom. I could have put another strip in like I say but I was living on the edge a bit with this one um, and we're going to raise it up to the top so we've got a enough room still in that parameter there and I'm going to draw around it with a friction pen. And then what you can do, if you want to, because it's a friction pen, you can put a line, or if it's chalk, down the middle, so that then when you flip it over, you've got not only the pins, but you can see where your line is, you can match that up. And then we're going to just make sure that that's all nice, make sure that's nicely lined up and we're going to go along the other side. Right, so we've got our shape, it is actually really hard to see but hopefully it'll be fine, placed on there and we're going to cut around the edge. And you can use a rotary blade or you can use your scissors. I'm going to use my scissors and we're following along those lines. Now 
Now, if you wanted to make it out of, um, not out of strips, out of one piece of fabric, this is kind of the bit that you would start from. You'd just cut out your two shapes, fuse your fleece to the back or the front, one will be your lining, one will be your outer fabric, and away you go. Follow on from this step. Okay, so you've got your shape cut out. You don't have to do this bit, but I'm gonna baste around the corners where there's these little bits that could get caught in the wrong direction. We're just gonna baste around those to keep those nicely in place so that they don't kind of cause us any issues later on. we've got our shape all ready to go. Right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to repeat that whole thing. Don't worry, I've already done it. Here is one I made earlier. So you want to do that twice, okay? Then we're going to get our bias binding and we are going to, we're going to put it along the top. Now there's a few ways, as you probably know, to do bias binding. You can either open it up, stitch in the ditch, as they say, in that fold, all the way along, fold it over, fold it over, and then stitch usually from the back, or you can do it the other way around, so you stitch the first bit on the back and stitch then from the front. Um, and hope that you catch that in and you get a really nice stitch. Okay, that's one way. The other way you can do it is you just literally fold it over that edge and stitch along and hope that you catch, you know, the back and the front. But the way that we're going to do it is we're going to use our very handy glue. And all we're going to do so easy is we're just going to place a very thin bead of fabric glue along that very edge and want to make sure you've got the thinner of the two rectangles at the top okay because that's where our zip is going to go oops not too much then we're going to put our bias on and we can we've got a bit of a wriggle of wriggle room and the glue does mean that we can move it if we need to fabric glue is good because it's really usually really really tacky okay then we're going to turn it over and we're going to glue it on the back as well and this means that it usually stays in place and it makes your life so much easier. You can also use as well the little glue, fabric glue pens if you've got one of those. So just making sure you're pulling it across so that it's even so that the edge of that that raw edge is in the fold of your bias. Your hands do get a bit mucky, just how it is. <laughs> okay, now you can put clips on there if you want to. You've got my clips, and you can put clips all the way along if you want to keep it in place. We're going to do that because I'm going to hope I'm hoping that that will dry while I do the other side because we know that we need to do it on the two top edges. I'm going to cut off that excess, take my other one and do the same to that one. And then it kind of becomes the fabric. You just don't need to worry about the binding at all because it's just there. 
cut off the excess and I cut off that excess as well, I'll write it. Let's put that one to one side, grab the original one and we want to put our zipper on the left. Unless you're right handed, it almost always goes on the left and we're going to place our zipper underneath. I'll take these clips off now. And I'm going to get my trusty double sided tape. And we're going to place double sided tape along the edge of the zipper, as close to the edge of the tape as we can. Double sided tape is a game changer when it comes to putting in zips. Get it super cheap off of Amazon. I'll pop a link to the one I use in the description as well. Put that there. Press it on really well. Take off the paper. Then we're going to lay our panel on top. Like so, I actually want to make it a bit more centred, don't we? Because that's the tape needs to be even. And the edge of the binding needs to be a quarter of an inch from the middle of the zipper tape. So I'm just going to grab my little tool, my seams right tool. And no, that's not quite close enough. So I'm going to, actually I'm going to close that up smidge it over a little bit. Right now I'm going to change over to a zipper foot on my machine and we're going to sew along the edge of that bias binding quite close to the folded edge. And then what I like to do, I haven't gone as straight as I would like, is I like to do a second line of stitching. For the second line of stitching, I'm gonna change back over to my walking foot. I want to use my quilting foot because it's gonna, as much as you can, you try and use your quilting foot. So I've lined it up in a certain place that I can see. And I should mention as well that we are stitching from the top, not from underneath. Okay, so we're going to go Okay, so now we've got our zipper attached on one side and we're going to repeat that for the other side. So we're going to grab our piece that we put our binding on earlier Take off the clips because the glue will have dried a bit better now. And we want to get our zipper tape, double sided tape I should say. Place that along that edge. So we're going to lay on that other side on top with any luck our strips will hopefully line up, they kind of do. Go back to the zipper foot again and then we're going to sew along that edge. Okay, so we're making a bit of progress now. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make our pocket. So I'm going to put that to one side and I'm going to grab this pattern piece too. And we're going to fold it and we're going to place it right sides together. 
and then I'm going to sew one centimeter from the edge along those two shorter edges and then about an inch along that bottom end, uh, edge on both sides. So I'm moving my needle over, I want to reduce my stitch length down to two and a half. Do a locking stitch to start. Go almost to the bottom, needle down, foot up and turn. And we're going to stitch about an inch along this edge. First off. Then we're going to go along. Oh, that's not meeting up. So I've stitched up along those two edges, we're going to snip the corners at a, tri at a triangle, an angle, and we're going to turn it the right way through. Right, I'm going to grab my pressing mat, give that a quick press. it's nice and flat and then I want to grab our bag, bag panels that we've made so far and you want to think about when you open the bag you're going to want the pocket on the back side right it doesn't ultimately it doesn't really matter but that's my theory so I'm going to flip it up because I want it to be on this side okay and we want to find the center so Give it a finger press to find the centre and I'm just going to pop a pin in there so it's really clear and I'm going to find the centre of this panel as well. Do you ever use a straight pin to pull the corners out on the thin material pieces? Uh, when you're turning, do you mean, when you're banging it out, I do sometimes, you mean out of here like this, like with a pin and do that, I do sometimes. Um, I find that it's very easy to pull the threads out. I do have a, a, a pokey tool, but actually, I think I showed you this on the last slide. This tool here, it's a clay shaper. Well, actually it's called a color shaper. Um, because it's got a silicon rubber end, which is really soft, but it is still a point, I've noticed that it really gets into the corner as well because you can push it really hard and know that it's not going to poke through the weave. So I recommend these. I think these are um, really, really good for, for turning out actually because even with a pokey tool, look, that has gone... Look at that, can you see that? That is a really sharp point. That one, not so much. I probably could have worked that a bit harder. Um, but yeah, recommend if you want to get a new a new tool, recommend that. Or yeah, you can just use a pin. You just have to be a bit careful sometimes, don't you? Um, so finding the middle, put a pin in, and then we want to go one inch down from that edge. So I'll grab my seams right on the edge of the zipper tape, not the bias. Okay. Pop some pins in. Then we're going to sew around the two short sides and the long bottom side and obviously you've got that turning hole in there so that will close that. Also you want to just sew a little triangle at the top. I'll show you what I mean on the machine. Bear in mind that for this um, stitching obviously you're going to see the bobbin on the outside 
okay so just bear that in mind that's one reason another reason why we have that pocket on the back there's no other way to do it if you put the pocket on before you did the strips the strips were so straight through the pocket so um that's just how it is you could leave the pocket off if you wanted you could hand sew the pocket on um if you really didn't like that stitching on the outside it doesn't really bother me because of the quilted look um but yeah that's just something to bear in mind. So what we want to do is we want, I'm going to start off at the top. We want to start off, there's about a centimetre, just over a centimetre. This is going to help to stop that pocket really gaping open. Um, I'm going to go with a three stitch length. So I've started about a, a centimetre along that top edge, the edge that I said not to sew that makes sense did a locking stitch to start then I've come to the edge so I'm going to turn down and then what you can do is you can go back and do a little triangle if you want or you can just continue sewing I'm going to continue sewing I think rather than doing a triangle I'm going to take that pin out and we're going to turn the work again the needle in I'm going to go along again about another centimeter and then you'll see you see that so we've got that little stitch there so that then it doesn't bag as much okay it doesn't gape as much so you can see the stitching does show through on the outside but because there's so much going on I don't think you really notice it too much okay so then we're going to open up our zip so we've got that completely open and we're going to place it right sides together so I've turned it over opened up the zip right sides together and we're going to sew along that bottom seam one centimeter from the edge you can use clips if you want I do recommend a walking foot because you're going through a bit of bulk and we're going to sew along that edge Go down to a two and a half. So we've sewn along that bottom edge, then we're going to put our binding. So the way that we do it is we do a seam, put on our binding, move along to the next seam. I'm going to grab a piece of binding and we're going to do exactly the same that we did before, putting glue along that edge. You can cut down this seam as well if you want to, to create a little bit less bulk. Totally up to you, I'm not going to. Because I quite like that it fills the uh, binding, the bias binding. Okay, so we've got the bound bottom edge and then we are going to, you know what, something I forgot to do, forgot to do our tabs. So I'm going to go and grab my tabs, where have I put those? Ooh, put that to one side a second, there's still time to do this. So this is pattern piece four, this again is optional, you don't have to do this, totally up to, do, up to you. And we're going to do just like we would do, would do with straps, fold it in half and press so that we've got a nice edge to work with. And then we're going to fold that in half again, fold that in to meet that line and fold it again and press. Okay, so we've got our tabs. I quite like to add tabs because it just means when you're opening and closing the zipper, you've got something to hold on to. It makes it a little bit easier. Uh, I've done the tabs on this one as well. Um, you can also add in a little D ring or a little lobster clasp if you want to. You can hang it up or add some, you know, um, my daughter's one, the first one that I made, she's put key rings on the end. So that's another little thing that you could do. 
Then we're going to top stitch along each of those long edges. And then we're going to fold it in half and we're going to baste it, whoops, we're going to baste it to the middle of that zipper. Okay, so we're going to do one that end and we're going to do one the other end as well. The other thing we can do here as well is we can add in our tag. If you're using a tag, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pin that out of the way. I'm going to base those. So I've taken those pins out, then we're going to sew up the sides of the bag. So we want to open it up, so we've got the top here, bottom here. We're going to pull this bit, this seam here, towards this seam here. Okay. So we've got the bottom seam and then there's the zip, okay? We're matching up those two edges, right sides together, okay? I'm going to clip that in place and we're going to sew with one centimetre seam allowance along that edge. Now at this point you want to choose which way your bottom seam is going to be pushed. I recommend you push it towards the back, which is where your pocket is, but really that's up to you. Okay, you wanna make sure that that's in the middle of the zip because you are gonna see that on the outside and we're gonna sew that seam. Then we're gonna do the same on the other side that excess bit of binding, so I'm just going to cut that off, place those two edges together and sew along that seam. Now when you sew this other end you want to make sure that your your bottom seam is being pushed in the same direction. So this edge is being pushed that way, you want to make sure this end is being pushed the same way, okay? Want to also want to make sure that it's in the middle of that zipper. If you find that your machine really does not like that, um, you can switch out to a jeans needle. Jeans needles are a bit tougher, but they don't pierce the fabric like a leather needle does. A leather needle will make holes in your fabric and you don't necessarily want that because that can, even with a woven, that can... Um, uh, make it less strong, make the seam, lose the strength in the seam. So now we're going to go along that seam and we're going to put some more bias binding. I'm going to cut off, make sure that all that bias is flush. Okay, so that side, I have actually missed it a little bit on that first side, so I'm just going to re-stitch that. It doesn't look too bad. It's not too bad from the side, from the front. It's on the inside anyway. Then, it's going to look like that. Definitely need your zipper open, because that is obviously how we're going to birth the bag in a little bit. Right, so now we're going to pinch those sides together. Okay, with any luck, it will match up with that seam in the middle of that fold. Okay, so there's the fold, I'll show you again. There's, there's how it was, and we're going to pinch it and place those two seams together. Okay, 
Again, we want to make sure that our seam allowance is going down towards the bottom of the bag, which is here. That's really important. Okay, so we're going to clip that. And we're going to do the same on the other side. Clip that. Again, make sure that that bias binding is going towards the bottom of the bag. We'll turn it around. We're going to clip them all at the same time, doing exactly the same. This bias going down towards the bottom of the bag. Turn it over and do the last one. So make sure you haven't got anything folding in the wrong way. If you've basted it before, that would be fine. Okay, so I've clipped those four seams and I'm going to sew them with a one centimetre seam allowance over on the machine. And you want to stitch it from the bias binding side. Um, that's going to make it a lot easier for you to see which way you're pushing it as you sew. So we've sewn those four seams and then all we have to do is add the binding to those four seams. Now to do that we need to do it a little bit different. Let's grab my binding. We are going to cut it so that it is the length of the seam. Well first of all, first of all we're going to tidy up, cut off any of that excess bias binding, if you want to trim a bit down, you can do that too now. Make it all really nice and neat. So then when it comes to putting on our binding, we're going to cut our binding so it's nice and neat on the end. No little hairies. And we're going to fold it so that it's one centimetre in. Now you can open it up do it that way it's quite nice to do it that way and then you've got the excess in there okay then when you come to put it on that is going to not be you don't want a raw edge of your bias binding on there you want to have it folded okay for these final seams so we're going to cut that we're going to measure that just by eye Cut that a bit longer. And then what you can do is you can add another little bit of glue in there. The other way you can do it as well is you can fold it like that. That's quite a nice edge. Let's do it that way. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue, a little tiny bit when it's opened up, if I can get the glue to play the game, tiny bit in there. Okay, so I'm folding those edges. They're going to stick down there. Then I'm going to put a little tiny bit on there. I'm going to do the same on the other end. Little tiny bit, little tiny bit. I'm not going to fold that bottom or that that end yet. I'm going to fold this in, okay? And that's staying there, nicely folded in. Then I'm going to put it on. Being careful with my other end. Put it on. We're going to glue it as we did before, and then we can see how much we need to fold it in on that other end. Does that make sense? We can fold that in because now we know where we want that end to be. Fold that in so that it's the right length.
So now we want to reach through, grab the bag, turn it the right way out. Really, really easy. You can give it a bit of a press if you want to. You can put a towel inside, give it a press. And it's done. Thank you so much for watching. If you love this video, you're going to love the video coming up on the screen right now. This is the Valentina pouch. Now, if you've never used faux vinyl or faux leather, please do check it out. It's a really great introduction to using faux leather and I think you're going to love it. I'll see you on the next video.